How's it going guys? This is Izzy and Mad Dog again. I don't know how he did it, but he's back. Um, we're going to be predicting UFC on FX, Maynard versus Guida, the entire card, and then UFC 147 on a different video, just the main card, because it's such an exciting fight, we just want to talk about the main card. Um, let's start off with the first fight on Prelim Facebook. Ken Stone versus Dis Dustin Pei. Who do you have, Mad? Okay. And uh, originally, you know, Ken Stone was supposed to face Francisco Rivera. I don't know much about Ken Stone. I know he's 10 and 3. I know he's trained with American Top Team, but I had Rivera beating him, and then Rivera got hurt. And uh, Dustin Peg, you know, he's just that amazing win over Jared Depazian. So I, I had Depazian destroying Peg, and the fact that he came in and choked him out in the first round, but I, I'm now a fan. I'm going to go for Peg. <laughs> I also have Dustin Peg. I have him winning by submission. Um, Ken Stone, he's, he's also a, a submission type of guy, but I, I think Dustin Peg will pull the, the victory in this one. Um, next next fight, Dan Miller versus Ricardo Funch. Uh, of course, we know what the Millers are experts in, and Ricardo Funch is coming in. Um, I believe this is... What are the lines for this fight? Um, Funch is coming in as the underdog, of course, to Dan Miller. Um, who do you have winning this fight? Yeah. Yeah. Matt Brown versus Luis Ramos. I have Matt Brown winning. Who do you have? Matt Brown as well. And Matt Brown in his last fight actually, imp I had him losing against Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy. But, uh, but I actually picked Brown in that fight. Yeah. Brown would win that. I knew Thompson was overrated. He has no rap game. He has no cardio. <laughs> Oh, you got me on that one. Um, yeah, but Matt Brown, see, the thing is with Matt Brown, um, he's very sketchy. He's like, he has his on and offs. Um, he'll be on a high, and then he just loses his next fight. So I don't know what to expect from him in this fight, but I'm going to take him by decision. You know, he's a grindy fighter, and I, I think he's going to pull off the decision victory in this one. Knockout, damn. All right, um, Nick Catone versus Chris Camozzi. I have Nick Catone using his wrestling to win the decision victory. What about you? I do too. I mean, Catone's first fight in a year and a half. He just is coming over to Achilles uh, tendon. Yeah. And, uh, he's been out for over a year. He's you know, trained a freak kicker and a lady at Gracie. He's a real tough cat. Camozzi's no slouch, but I really don't think that uh, he's on the same level as Catone. Yeah, yeah. Catone's coming in as the... Uh, 185 uh, favorite and Chris Camozzi's plus 155. Um, next fight, we got the mix between Lesnar and Keith. Uh, Brock Jardine making his UFC debut against Rick Story. Um, I have Rick Story winning the decision here. What do, what do you have? I too have Rick Story winning the decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he said Rick Story, they don't make him like Rick Story. He's never been finished. So he's only 13 and 5, but he's just one tough cat. But Brock uh, Jardine is so slouch. Yeah, Rick Story uh, victories over Johnny Hendricks and Tiago Alves, two really big names out there. But he ha he also lost, has losses to Martin Kamen and Charlie Brenneman, also big names. So I, I, I see Rick Story recovering. He's, he's on a two-fight losing streak, and I see him winning this fight. So it should be exciting for him. Um, Steven Sealer versus Joey Gambino. Okay, this, this kid, nobody really knows about him. Joey Gambino and CJ Keith are two guys to watch out on this prelim card. Um, I have Joey Gambino. Winning by TKO. Who do you have? I actually started uh, Steven Siler from a quick pick because, you know, I'd never heard of Joey Gambino. And exactly. I research and I thought it was 9 0. But it didn't impress me. I don't, I don't you go for that undefeated stuff. I know he's undefeated. That, it doesn't mean anything to me because it doesn't mean they haven't fought anybody tough yet. <laughs> Yeah, um, I actually watched his his last fight. He won uh, the championship at, the championship in the uh, I forget what league it is. It's like over here on the East Coast. Um, and he won it in the first round real quick TKO. He's very powerful. Um, 
So I expect this to be fireworks, and people are going to know who, who Joe Gambino is. Um, next guy talk, talking about uh, Ramsey, Ramsey Nijem versus CJ Keith. Um, of course, I have CJ Keith again winning by TKO. Who do you have? We finally did it. I'm going on Ramsey on this. My boy Ramsey. Why are you going on Ramsey? I agree with you on that, but uh, CJ Keith, um, very powerful. First first round finish, I see it coming in. At him with being a underdog at 260, I have to bet him straight. Um, I'm going to take CJ Keith to, to win this fight, and I'm going to also bet him. Small, not too big, but um, I see him winning, man. So, <laughs> I don't blame you. It's not that bad of a bet. I, just, I really think Ramsey can fall through, but we'll see. All right, now this next fight, um, I really don't understand why it's in the prelims. I've talked about this on Twitter. Um, Hatsu Hiyoki versus Ricardo Lamas. Um, I've, I don't know. I've been going back and forth with this fight. Hatsu, of course, we know he's a ground specialist. And Lamas is just coming in as the opportunity of his lifetime. Um, originally, I actually picked Hatsu Hiyoki to win by submission. But I don't know. Today something happened. And I'm actually going to go with Ricardo Lamas by TKO. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Yes, I'm going. Yes, exactly. Um, I don't know, but the thing is with Hatsu is, he's he doesn't have the best takedowns, and Ricardo Lamas has some pretty good takedown defense. And I don't know, man. I see Lamas coming in hungry. Um, he's fought some really tough competition. Going in with, uh, he defeated Cub Swanson, Mac Rice, and James Krause, who personally, um, I think James Krause is a pretty good fighter. Um, and he he only has losses to Danny Castillo and Yuri Alcantara, like. This this dude's no joke, so I see him pulling the upset in this fight, actually. Well, sir, in my opinion, from my theory, I think this fight will probably spend at most total a minute on the feet, because I think both these guys are crowd specialists, more, more or less, where Lamas is more of a wrestler, he's more of a takedown fighter, and Hatsu is more of a ground specialist. So I think both these guys are going to get hurt on the feet, and I think both these guys are going to get hurt on the feet. I don't know, man. I've, I've just had this feeling, and I see Ricardo Lamas uh, pulling it off. And honestly, the the lines aren't that appealing. Um, Hatsu Hiyoki coming in as the favorite, of course, 225, and Ricardo Lamas plus 175. Plus 175 doesn't really entice me to, to bet on him, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going with the underdog in this one, and hopefully I'm right, because I, I kind of picked Hatsu, you know, Hatsu to, at the beginning, but now I'm changing, so we'll see. Ross Pearson versus Cub Swanson. What? Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. Like, like, how bad would that be if, if he loses and then he's going to be kicking himself because he turned down the title shot? Like, you know? But, he might not get it back. Yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah, exactly. Maybe another reason that they put him up against Ricardo Lamas and they put him on the prelim card. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. it's whatever. But all right. Uh, next fight, Ross Pearson versus Cub Swanson. I have Ross Pearson outboxing Cub and taking the TKO. What do you have? Uh, myself as well. I don't know if it's going to go with TKO. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, exactly. I think this is going to be all stand up, and but I think uh, Ross Pearson's uh, kickboxing and boxing is just it's just on a different level than Cubs Austin right now. So um, I see him just of course, a George Roop of George Roop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's it's exciting, man. So th- this fight's definitely going to be fireworks. I, I I can see why this is in the main card. Um, next. Also, you know, he just switched camps too to uh, Alliance with uh, uh, Dominic Cruz and Davis and Vera and Captain Sid Allen. I I did not know that. I didn't know that little bit of information. 
But um. Oh, yeah. and, uh... Yeah. Well, of course, Ross Pearson is the is the favorite. Cubs Swanson is the underdog at 176. Um, again, another fight that I really wouldn't want to bet. Just want to enjoy it because I think it's going to be, you know, one punch can make the difference. So I just want to enjoy that fight. Um, next fight, Brian Ebersaw versus TJ Waldberger. I have Brian Ebersaw TKOing TJ Waldberger. What about you? Yeah. Yeah, it's like sixty five. He's he's had like sixty five fights. So Yeah, yeah, but TJ Waldberger, of course, with very impressive submissions. Um, on Sure Dog, I do a quick pick on there, and uh, a lot of people were picking Waldberger. Um, I guess, yeah, I think only like uh, twenty percent were picking Brian Eversall. So I don't know what's up with that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that. It's funny. Sam Stout versus Spencer Fisher, the rubber match. I mean, I don't know, man. In my opinion, Spencer Spencer Fisher, he's reti- of course he's retiring after this fight. Um, I just see him as a washed-up fighter now. No disrespect to what he's done, but I see Sam Stout um, finishing Spencer Fisher in this fight. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Fisher, he's won one of his last five fights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's an interesting fact. Um, Sam Stout and Spencer Fisher are both coming off losses to the same person, Tiago Tavares. Um, Spencer Fisher oh. lost by TKO, and Sam Stout lost by decision. So. Yeah, yeah, so exact. I mean, I just see Sam Stout being the young fighter, coming up, taking out Spencer Fisher, and finally, uh, you know, ending that trilogy. Um, the main event, I think, very, very uh, exciting main event. Clay Guida versus Gray Maynard. I'm going with Gray. Obviously, you have Clay. I agree with you, but I, I kind of ha- disagree with you because Gray Maynard, he's also done, uh, he switches cam over to Santa Cruz. Uh, he's training with guys like Luke Rockhold and everything. And um, they're really focused on his movement, you know, his fast twitch muscles. They're, they're doing all of that. And Clay Guida charges. Yes, he does has a lot of pressure and he has cardio to last days. But I see Gray Maynard as a 2.0 right now and I see him. Uh, <laughs> you know, I know he's top 10, I know he's great. Damn. He was the star by Ed Brayer for 15 years, and then he laid on Kenny Florian for 15 minutes, and he got a title shot. And then mm. apparently he had power because he hadn't knocked anybody out in four years. He knocked Frank Yeager down twice, and they had a draw. And then he got a rematch, <laughs> and he got knocked out. He's still a big deal, apparently. I don't see it. Uh, Clay, this was better Clay. Uh, Clay, <laughs> this last fight, Henderson looked amazing. He's starting to get amazing cardio this season. Yeah. Now he has two more rounds to work with. Yeah. I, All right, man. Well, we'll see how it goes. I think this is the most exciting card this weekend. Um, and I guess that's it. <laughs> and any any last words before we switch over to one forty seven? No, I'm really All right. Well, that's it for UFC on FX.